Well, thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I want to thank you for uh, holding uh, today's hearing on my legislation, H.R. 3993, the Calling Card Consumer Protection Act, and for allowing me to participate uh, as a member of the M Energy and Commerce Committee, but not a member of this subcommittee. Uh, I would also uh, like to uh, welcome Commissioner Akampora from my home state of New York uh, for attending this hearing as well. Uh, and I appreciate the, uh, the comments uh, made by, uh, by all of my uh, colleagues uh, in support of the bill, even though some uh, may have some questions about, about certain uh, parts of it. Um, as many of us know, uh, calling cards are an invaluable resource for people who don't have long-distance telephone service in their home or those who make frequent overseas calls. Calling cards that provide the services that the companies advertise can save consumers a great deal of money when they call home. But unfortunately, as members have said this, as we're seeing over and over again, many companies fail to keep their advertised terms. About three years ago, I began hearing from a number of constituents regarding their prepaid calling cards. They were contacting me because their calling cards failed to provide the number of minutes that were advertised. In fact, many were not even close to delivering the promised number of minutes. In independent tests, calling cards were shown to provide far fewer minutes than were advertised. One study found that on average, the caller only received 60% of the minutes guaranteed by the card. I recently read that the prepaid calling card industry takes in $4 billion a year in revenue. If the cards are only providing 60% of the minutes, we can all do the math. This deception is costing consumers and honest companies hundreds of millions of dollars a year. Calling card fraud harms segments of the population, as my colleagues have pointed out, who are among the most vulnerable to being victimized by unscrupulous companies only seeking to make a quick profit. These companies are known to target poor, minority, and immigrant populations, and they don't stop there. Even our soldiers in Iraq and Afghanistan have been preyed upon by deceptive, deceptive practices of calling card companies. My legislation will put a stop to these practices. It would also provide that the government is able to enforce the legislation to try to get rid of the dishonest companies. Calling cards are an extremely useful product for consumers, and I don't want to see honest companies punished. There's absolutely no reason why a company cannot deliver what is promised and still turn an honest profit. If consumers know that the card they purchase will provide the full amount of calling time that's advertised, this will benefit both consumers and the marketplace. And let me just say, I think that industry here should support this bill, not get bogged down with ridiculous reasons for opposing it. Uh, I, I commend uh, those segments of the industry that are working with us, but the ones that are dragging their feet, if, if they have nothing to hide, if their calling cards are not fraudulent, then they should enthusiastically support this legislation. And I want to thank Senator Nelson of Florida, who is sponsoring uh, this bill uh, in the Senate as well. Uh, I would strongly encourage the members of the committee, of the subcommittee, to support H.R. 3993. Um, I will show a flexibility in, in working with members to see if we can all come to, a, to a, a conclusion. But we don't want to water down the bill so much that it becomes ineffective. So I think that's the counter to what some of my uh, colleagues have pointed out. But I do appreciate the, um, the bipartisan support for this bill, and uh, I strongly urge members of the committee to support it. And I thank you again, Mr. Chairman, for holding this hearing today and allowing me to participate as a subcommittee member. And I yield back the balance of my time.